Today we're outside Los Angeles to talk to a man who's leading an automotive revolution. He's the founder of Icon 4x4 and he also happens to be a watch collector. His name is Jonathan Ward and today we're talking watches. So Jonathan, thanks so much for meeting with us today. If you could, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do before we get into the watches. Okay. I am just driven by design and love vintage almost without exception over new versions of the same thing. I sort of followed my passions and my wife and I quit our real jobs and started this company we call Icon. And Icon is focused on revisiting classic transportation design in a modern context. So kind of new approaches, but the bare essence of it is the best of the old with the best of the new. Best known maybe for the Broncos or the Toyotas? Or? Yeah, I think we started with another brand called TLC that was just vintage Land Cruisers. And then we started Icon first with the classic FJ40. So I think we're mostly known for our four-wheel drive production models based on the 60s Ford Bronco we call the BR. The FJ based on the old FJ40 that we do in four body styles. So the idea is like they look like the original but a little bit more technical industrial and what would have been plastic in the 60s or 70s is, you know, geeked out, often watch inspired, knurled, machined, done up in aluminum or stainless or, you know, something sexier. So my idea was simply, well, let's take the best powertrain and brakes and electrical and corruptions and conveniences of new cars and fuse them into the vintage aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So we have those production models. Then we do one-offs that we call derelicts or reformers. Derelicts are the same idea, but from a different perspective. They kind of look like crap and all patinaed and funky, but then hide all the modernness that you'd want. And then the reformers are the shiny versions of that. So how does your, your love of watches, and it's clear that there is a real love of watches, kind yeah. of translate into to what you do day to day? As you were asking the question, I was starting to think it through, like which came first? And I actually think my watch issue was probably the earliest manifestation of my love for design and detail and yeah. quality. So I draw probably an absurd amount of inspiration from watches, furniture, architecture. I'll more often draw inspiration from every design segment but transportation. So what are some of the watches here that have been translated into some of the, the designs for Icon? I would say initially the surface coating that Hans Wettstein developed for the Ventura brand. This was actually like my work watch when I actually used to work, literally welding and crafting and grinding on the shop with my team. I welded and there was slag would bounce off this finish and it was so durable and I love the sort of nano sheens. That was actually the inspiration that we took to Cardinal Coatings, our developer, the powder coat finish for the FJs. What else? Bell and Ross. I like this sort of aeronautical thing that's been working so well with them. The gauges on a couple of my production models were strongly influenced by mm -hmm. different models there. For the FJ, this knurling character came just out of watches in general. And so with watches, who do you think is, is doing it the right way? You know, who do you think really pays attention to detail? Blanc Palm, how are you supposed to say it? Mm -hmm. I wear it, but probably say it wrong. I love their detail and finish work and artistry. They're such geeks. I want to meet the dude behind all that insanity. Jacques Droz, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I have a couple of those. Martin Braun, from a creative standpoint, uh, I'm really impressed and proud of what he's up to. Dubay and Scotland Braun for sort of retro modern vintage without jumping the shark, I really dig. So tell me a little bit about this guy right here. Yeah, and this neat. It's my understanding that this was done in Japan as like a consortium of corporations worked together on it in an effort. Seiko was the principal, right, mm -hmm. I believe, behind it. You could do a northern hemisphere or a southern hemisphere version, and then the sun and dice rotates, and then there's a small ticker. Now, it's kind of one of those watches. It's like cars. When people do amphibious cars, it irks me because all you end up with is a crappy boat and a crappy car because you really <laughs> got to pick your project. So I never wear it, but as a design piece, I loved what they were doing. It looks a lot like this one. Yeah, that's easier to tell time. <laughs> the Magellan, always wanted one, saw one in Basel, couldn't come close to affording it, scored one online and went for it. I like the way they did the crown cover. And it's just, it's a little one of those conversation watches, like story watches yeah. that I dig. And there's so many early designs, turn of the century stuff through to 60s stuff. Yep. 
that I'm dying to do sort of the icon theology of revisit that language, but in a modern context, both in material and sapphire and scalability and stuff. Yeah. A lot of the early Hamilton stuff. Completely. It's, yeah. It seems like military kind of style stuff is something that, that really yeah. attracts you. So what is this? This one, I have no idea what the hell it is, other than like this one when it ticks, you better not be near TSA because they'll think you're carrying a bomb. <laughs> I was at the Rose Bowl swap meet 15, 20 years ago. There were a couple watch dealers there and like, eh, you know, kind of borderline iffy stuff. I saw a guy in the crowd like, wearing like cool vintage boots, guy, cool style, older guy. And I heard him trying to offer and sell this watch to the dealer. And the dealer was like, didn't want to be there. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. And it was a Rolex. No, go. You leave. So I'm like, hmm. So I, I walked and chased the guy. I'm like, excuse me. And I, I couldn't help but over here. So it turned out he used to be a diver on Jacques Cousteau's dive team. <laughs> the story was in the 70s, Jacques was invited to speak at some like Mariner's Club or something in England. And the Mariner's Society gifted him the watch for speaking. And then when this guy retired as a diver with Jacques, Jacques gave it to him. Interesting. So I was all over it. And again, and like because of the derelict stuff I dig, you know, it's got a gnarly chip out of the corner of a porcelain, and it's got that sense of age. And an onion crowns, I'm a sucker for a good onion. Mm -hmm. And I just love this watch. I've, I've had it forever and uh, really dig it. And it seems like almost this IWC is kind of in the same vein a yeah, little bit. Yeah, definitely. Is it true they repurposed, they took pocket NOS watch vintage movement. pocket watch? Yep. Movement? That's just too cool. It is. Absolutely. I love it. So again, I'm a sucker for history and a sucker for story. And the scale and size and artful execution of this really kind of sold me up on it. Your work, mm -hmm. the 101, I just dug it. I love, again, the history, the Renaissance uh, church clock background and history to it. And then the first cool watch I remember, my dad had an El Primero. And I remember really digging that. How can so, you not, uh, you know? Yeah, it's, such, it's just such an icon. Coons, you know, a lot of his stuff's a little, again, more, what, avant-garde than me, but like surface coatings, bronze DLC, and his PVD, and the layered dial, and bi-retrograde, you know, I, I dig that. And being a Finnish geek, that drew me. What do you think, by the way, of this, a lot of guys starting to use brass? You know, it's it's not lasting. You know, yeah. I think it's super cool. Obviously, not lasting like in that. its softness, exactly. And the patina. So I'm down with the patina, the, but the softness is kind of a. The, the softness is what concerns me, to be honest. Especially if you're talking about a Panerai. I mean, like these things oxidize, you know, in six months or a yeah. year. And what's it going to be like in 30 years? You know, and then like it could really start to degrade, and it is so soft that you might have some issues with it. I think they look awesome. I really do. I love the way that the Panerais look, especially like. If you take it into water, and, yeah, you, know, yeah. like, and you live on the beach, really with it, live it, it looks yeah. really great. And so, what's kind of the future of, of your watch collecting uh, world? Whew. Well, I think I'm at least financially I'm cooked. Funny side story though, because you know, as a building a brand, my wife and I own it. We have no investors. Every dime that we make is literally right back in. Mm -hmm. Other than recently, a little bit of put life back in balance, travel, enjoy life a little bit more. But I can't afford my taste in watches. So I have a really cool, clever approach that I highly recommend anyone who can pull it off. I call it my monopoly money. So when I buy an old car, we don't sell used parts. There's a box on the invoices when we start a repair order for a client where they can opt to save all the old parts. My customers don't want to save the old parts and deal with it and pick it up. So what I've done is I'll take those parts and sell them on eBay or whatever chipmunk away some PayPal money, so it's, it's not coming out of my paycheck, mm -hmm. my wife doesn't see it leaving the bank account, so I don't get in trouble, and like I can feel re somewhat responsible. And then I'll wait till I amass some funds there, and then that's what I've used to acquire all my then watches. Strike, yeah. Or the, <laughs> yeah. boom, yeah. then I'm in. <laughs> I'm looking now more to trench and vintage for the uniqueness and the price point, and I think investment-wise, they're kind of at a good point right now. But I think I'm probably going to keep chipmunking away, and then I'm going to try and talk Martin into building one of my stupid designs for him. If I can package it into one of his existing movements, there's one design in particular I'm just dying to do that's based on a 30s Duesenberg speedometer. Hmm. It's like this kick-ass black porcelain jump hour funk, and I want to do like a 43, 44 mil stainless case onion crowned very traditional retrograde kind of like the old iwc jump power movements but with a single view window oh, that's cool